we are building a custom full frame turbo kit for the TT225. Well, at least piecing one together. And ever since announcing that, parts have been showing up left and right. But in all honesty, there's a lot of unknowns to doing this. Like, what do we even need to build a turbo kit? And for that matter, what is a turbo kit? In the realms of a turbo system, what are we even replacing? It's more than just a turbo and less than everything. In other words, there's a lot to this. A number of different steps. However, in this box might just be the final piece of the puzzle. And with it, we will finally be able to make sense of this entire process. And not just throwing these parts on. I'm talking about the entire process. Starting with learning what even makes up a turbo system and what all parts we're going to need. Spending time researching options and debating potential outcomes. And eventually installing all the parts. This is the beginning of a long project. A project with an unknown outcome. I don't really know where this is gonna take the car or if anything's gonna go to plan. All I can really hope for is that I learn a lot on the way. So with the final piece in hand, I guess we ought to get started. Driving on the freshly paved road, I had a lot on my mind. One of which being, wow, uh, they actually repaved this really quickly. The other is where to really start this story. Like I mentioned, there's a ton to building a turbo kit, so there's a lot of ways we can really attack this. By far and away, most people would start with just showing the parts that they picked. But to be honest, I don't think that really does justice to the entire process. After all, there was a ton of research that went into every piece within these boxes. And all of those parts are listed in this notebook. Along with why we went with the options we did as opposed to all the other options out there. You can't even really start researching parts yet though. You kind of have to know what you're looking for in order to look for it. And not everybody does. It would be pretty cool if turbo systems were common knowledge, but if we're being honest, they're not. So if our goal is to generate a list of everything that is in this turbo system that we're trying to make, first, we're gonna have to understand what's in a turbo system. And even if a lot of people know this, it might benefit some people. So we're gonna include it. So in other words, before you can even start researching parts, you need to know what to research. After all, if you're upgrading the turbo on a car, different platforms are gonna need different things. So a general understanding of what makes up a turbo system is prerequisite knowledge. And if you go step by step, it's not nearly as complicated as you'd think. In order to turbo an engine, you need an engine. That's kind of the prerequisite to getting your turbo to work. And as you can guess, the second thing that you're gonna need in this system is the turbo. It has an exhaust side and an intake side. The exhaust side is powered by the engine and spins the intake side, which makes the intake suck in more air than it could normally. And since it's powered by the engine, it's attached to the engine, specifically with an exhaust manifold. But that's not the only one in the system though. On the other side is the intake manifold. This is effectively where all that air from the turbo goes to get back into the engine. And naturally, for that to happen, they need to be connected. This piping is known as charge piping, since the air is technically charged. And it generally routes to the front of the car where it passes through an intercooler, which cools the air. Once the turbos use the exhaust gas from the engine, it's sent through a downpipe and out the exhaust of the car. And turbos are also cooled with oil and coolant lines generally. The car also has to be able to regulate the pressure that the turbo makes, and that's where a wastegate comes in. It's basically a little diaphragm that bypasses the turbo if boost thresholds get too high. Cars also usually have diverter valves and blow-off valves in the intake path. There's also a lot of sensors and other stuff that's abstracted in this, but this is a good general summary. The only thing really not on here is the intake, but that's where it sucks in the air. And with that general understanding of how the turbo system works and what parts we need, we can talk about the specific parts that I chose. 
Depending on what car you have, different parts of this system will need to be upgraded. The best place to really start is how you're going to attach the turbo to the car. And on the TT, the stock manifold won't cut it, since it's only designed for OEM turbos. So I decided to ask around. And local to me, there's a shop that has a number of drag 1.8s. And while I'm not trying to make nearly that much horsepower, they did have a recommendation on the manifold itself, specifically a cast CTS top mount. There are a number of manifolds on the market, some cheap, some expensive. This is definitely a part you don't really want to cheap out on. And the fact that this is a cast manifold is a huge benefit. You don't really have to rely on someone else's welds. This manifold also flows a lot more than the stock one, which is going to be beneficial since we're going to be running a much larger turbo than stock. The big benefit though is the flange on top. This is a T3 flange, which means we can connect it to a whole range of turbos. The sky's the limit, really. And this manifold was actually the beginning of a rabbit hole. The people who make it used to have a bolt-on kit for the 225. Like all the other kits in the States, it's no longer made. But they do still make their kit for the Mark IV GTI. It's definitely not listed as working with the 225, but comparing the parts side by side, a lot looks very similar. So I decided to ask them which parts were used in both kits. And honestly, just reaching out to CTS confirmed two more pieces of the puzzle that I didn't know for sure were replicated. Since this is a top mount manifold, the turbo is in an entirely different location, but that means that we're gonna need a very custom downpipe. This won't really change that, but what this will do is act as a mid pipe and allow us to get the downpipe back near its original location. So it's gonna be a lot easier to make. And the downpipe is the real big unknown here. It'll be custom with this kit and I've never made one before. So it's gonna be a lot of learning. Although GTIs and TTs are both Mark IV cars, so they share the same downpipe tunnel. And and what this pipe does is place the downpipe exactly there. And it's actually built to work bolt-on with their exhaust manifold and include provisioning for an external wastegate, specifically a 39 mil one. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with internally wastegated turbos, but since the manifold and the O2 pipe are built to work together, we might as well get the third piece of that puzzle that we know will fit. This is a 39mm wastegate from Precision. Not only does it look cool, but it comes with a whole range of springs to allow us to change how it works. We'll definitely go into detail on how to set this later. All that you really need to know right now is that these are adjustable. It also has a ton of installation hardware and spacers that we can play with. This is the easy part. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. Now this car's gonna need a custom downpipe, and I've never welded before, so this is going to be a very fun learning experience as well. I'll try to find someone I know who does know how to learn so I'm not just aimlessly trying it. Sounds like a bad idea. Since the fabrication is the biggest unknown here, my goal was to do as little of that as possible to make this as close to a bolt-on kit as it could be. Hence why we're going with a lot of these off-the-shelf parts that may or may not work. This is all about testing. The downpipe is an interesting part of this project. We're gonna learn a lot, but let's try not to make it too hard. Rather than starting from scratch, I thought about it a little harder. When I was researching the old CTS kit for this car, they actually had this pipe. They don't anymore, but there are archived photos of it online. And not only is it pretty simple looking, but it's weirdly similar to a GTI downpipe. They're not the same because GTIs don't have a drive shaft in the way, but the current one on the car avoids this already. And since they share the same tunnel, they're likely in similar spots. Plus, our O2 pipe is already built for a GTI downpipe, so let's start there. This is a cheap stainless steel GTI downpipe. It bolts up to the parts that we already have, as well as fits in the Mark IV tunnel. And we know the bottom of our 225 downpipe accounts for the drive shaft. I figure we take the best of both worlds and weld the top half of the GTI downpipe to the bottom half of the 225 downpipe. And hopefully it's as simple as it sounds. But either way, it's gonna be fairly custom. This is gonna take a lot of measuring. And at this point, we don't know if it's gonna work yet, but it's a step forward. I also have gaskets as well as the oil and water lines for the turbo. Now we still definitely have to figure out the intake side, but that's gonna be a lot easier to figure out once we have the turbo bolted to the car and we know the fitment of everything. Since the intake is very dependent to where the turbo is, we're gonna worry about that later. We also have all the replacement fluids we'll need, just oil and coolant. But at this point, you're probably wondering about the one piece that's missing. 
we'll get to the turbo. But first, a quick note on the engine itself. I do have plans to throw forged internals in there someday, but it's all about time right now. The active problem is the turbo. So rather than pulling the engine and building the kit at the same time, my plan is to get the kit working and tested and proven with a mild tune first. Then when we want to turn it up later and we have the time, we'll build the engine. But that does not at all mean we can't have fun on the stock block. And this turbo was picked for that. I was talking to the guys over at Motoza a lot about this, since there are a number of turbos that you can choose for this car. My goal for the car has never been max horsepower. I honestly just don't think the car needs it. So as far as big turbos go, while this is a lot bigger than a K04, it's not really a big turbo. It's a GT2871R. And if you've been in the 1.8 community for a while, you'll know this turbo. It's been a go-to for years. Now this isn't by any means the biggest or the newest style of turbo that you could run on this car, and I'm sure there are better options out there. This, however, I think is going to be suitable for our use case. A usable upgrade in both torque and horsepower that will spool relatively quick. It's going to be a lot of fun. Especially since we're going to run this on stock block for a while, going with a GT28 style turbo was kind of the goal from the beginning. They spool really quickly, they can flow a ton more than a K04, but can also be ran safely stock block. Plus, the exhaust housing comes in the flanges we need. But before we get too excited and start ripping parts off the car, let's loosely fit everything together. Because at this point, it's entirely a theory. And I want to know if we need to modify or change anything before we tear the car apart. Plus, it should look pretty sweet. Even though this isn't on the car yet, it is extremely exciting to see that all of the research paid off and these parts will fit together. So far we aren't really going to have to modify anything too crazy other than the downpipe and the intake, but after all the research and time I spent looking into it, I don't think they're going to be as bad as I was initially thinking. And the cool thing is, after we build the engine, if we do want more power and a larger turbo, with the top mount manifold, it's going to be like an hour swap. But to be honest, I don't know if we will. The guys over at Motoza have tuned a lot of these turbos, and they say it spools a lot like a K04, but with gobs more torque and power across the entire range. And in all honesty, that sounds perfect for this car, because I intend to drive it a lot. Obviously, everything was hand tight for now because I was really just testing the fitment. The whole goal for this weekend was really just to figure out if these kits were going to work together. There's no sense in trying to put them on the car until we knew that. But now that we know that they do, the next step is to take the car apart. In other words, if things go to plan, this car should have a new turbo in the next few weeks. I'm definitely not trying to rush this though. I want this to be a learning experience for both you and me. So I'm going to go into a ton of detail with this, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider dropping a like and subscribing for more. That's the best way you can help support my channel. Either way, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you again. Have a wonderful day.